In the upper elementary classrooms, materials are used to introduce concepts and they stay with the child for as long as they need them. However, um, the goal now is to get the concepts in an abstract way, which means they don't need the materials. Um, obviously, when they leave our program, they go into the seventh grade traditional program at Karcher Middle School and they would not have those materials available to them. So we want to make sure that we are getting them ready to move on to that level as well. Um, and in 4th, 5th, and 6th grade, it is an appropriate time to start um, switching between the concrete into the abstract way of thinking. Is the concrete method of thinking important in the lower grades? It is extremely important um, for the kids to be able to get the concepts up at the um, upper elementary, they need to have those firm foundations of using materials in the lower level over and over and over again to put that picture into their head. And again, when we present things here, we usually start with the material to recreate that picture and to remind them of where they had come from and where they are going to go to. And in fact, in math, um, frequently we will not only just use the material, but we'll start, um, which would be the next thing, drawing a picture um, to represent how to find the information out. Hundreds to start with, and Caleb said that we're going to trade that thousand in, which is the seventeen that's on our paper here. That is so strange. All right, Caleb, this is where having sets of ten is helpful. So I'm going to put in a thousand. If you can take out ten hundreds, and you have to make sure you get them all out. Sometimes they stick at the bottom. There you go. Okay. Before we can divide up these hundreds, we need to clear the board. And then as I clear it, I try to make sets of 10. I got the answer. I got the answer. You know, when we have a bigger amount, we got the answer. Yeah. My prediction is five and two digits. Caleb's predicting if we have 17 hundreds, that each group will either get four or five. Do you want to divide up these hundreds? Make sure you're doing it fairly. This is confusing at some point. It's something brand new, so it'll be. It'll take a little bit of practice. Nice. How does the concrete lay a foundation in math? Well, so many of our materials are based on um, the beginning materials, even back in the preschool classroom. My own daughter um, has been going through preschool Montessori and has been using the bead chains for skip counting by two, four, six, and in her level, they were given as an introduction to um, counting by twos, counting by you know threes, counting by fours. And then up here, even in sixth grade, we go back to those chains. In fact, I gave a uh, presentation this morning where those chains build the root of a square. And we turn them into square root and um, learning how to do four times four is 16 and looking that that actually forms a square. So we're using them for squaring, for square root, for cubing, and for cube root. And so that beginning concept back in the lower elementary grades really builds on and what it actually means when they get up to this grade level. So when you say concrete, what you're basically saying is something that they can feel, touch, see. Hands on, exactly. Hands on. And then the, the bridge between concrete and abstract then would be drawing a picture to represent um, the concrete material um, in a way that they can use um, possibly in a testing situation even, if they don't have the material in front of them, then they can learn to draw a picture uh, to problem solve a situation. So that would be kind of the bridge between abstract and concrete. Read books, like hold the rectangle prism. With both hands feel the prism. And you do that. This is, this book is a rectangular prism. You would like that. So in the mathematics curriculum in Montessori, they get a very strong sense of what number is and what the relationships of numbers are at a very physical level. Particularly in the lower elementary grades, that is probably one of the, the things at the core of using those materials again and again. Um, and we do get asked, you know, why aren't the kids using it up at the upper elementary as much? Well, they are, but it's just not as needed 
for them because now they have gotten that core, they've gotten that foundation, and they're ready to move on to learning to do it on pencil and paper. How does the concrete and the abstract factor in other disciplines? Certainly. In language, um, in the lower elementary, the kids are using symbols to represent the different parts of speech. Um, so you'll often see students, when they write out a sentence, they'll be drawing in triangles and circles and other different shapes to represent sentence structure and, again, parts of speech. When they get to this level, we start to use those less and less. We start to use the colors that are associated with those parts of speech only, and then eventually we don't use them at all to identify um, at, at uh, you know, adverbs and, and other, again, parts of speech and that kind of thing. Um, this, the, the picture, um, again, is really important in their minds that they get that in that lower elementary, even in language, because as we know, uh, correct sentence structure, there is always a pattern um, that, and kids see that visually with these symbols and the colors and so forth, and so, you know, they start to be able to predict how um, a sentence, you know, most sentences or a lot of sentences are laid out, or even just how you typically see an article, then a um, adjective, and then a noun in a sentence. And so um, those symbols, like I said, create a, a picture in their mind for proper sentence structure and um, identifying the parts of speech. In science and social studies, which we call culture, that's um, the Montessori term, because they frequently overlap each other. We refer to it as culture. But um, in those areas, again, if they have a concrete material, um, like in the lower elementary classes, um, to study the parts of an animal and looking at the different kinds of systems an animal would have, they would lay out cards um, to do that beginning research. So in the beginning, they're learning it with a, a card, with, with a picture of the animal, a definition, and a, um, a label that goes with those things and learn to match them up and discriminate the different parts of an animal that way. Then when they come up to the um, upper elementary, when we're studying animal classification, they've already had some background knowledge on the different parts of animals and the things that make animals move and the things that animals have um, that creates differences between them, such as mammals have hair and fur and um, give live birth. They've already had that experience in the lower elementary. So when they come up here and we get into um, higher levels of classification and they're learning to use dichotomous keys to classify different things, they've already had experience with the hands-on material. Now they're able to go off and research things on their own and make their own classifications for things and own judgments about where things belong. So pattern and prediction is very important in this program. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Mm -hmm. I'd also say in science we offer lab experiences in a group situation, just like they would in a traditional classroom. We do do group lessons in um, learning to learn about the scientific method. Um, studying next week, we're going to be studying um, how different machines are used. We're going to be building pulleys and levers and inclined planes, and the kids are going to be looking um, at what kinds of machines were used. And then we're going to refer back from those kinds of machines and how they were used in ancient civilizations. So, for example, um, the Egyptians used the inclined plane to bring the blocks up towards the pyramid when they didn't have machines like we have today, like cranes and things like that. They were still able to build these phenomenal structures. So um, we're going to be taking what they learned in the past and combining it with the new information about different kinds of machines and letting them explore some inquiry questions they have on that.